Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the Sony F5 and their new version 2.0 firmware. Uh, if you follow our blog, you've seen other videos about, the, uh, about this camera, and our initial video showed the camera with its 1.0 firmware. Well, a lot of things have changed since then, so I wanted to give you a little update of what happened. So, uh, primarily, uh, in this firmware, there's a lot of little things, but primarily there's some big functional changes that make the camera even easier to operate. So I want to go over those changes that you see mostly even on that side panel there first and a couple other things I'll show you along the way. So let's start by looking at the side panel and those first four buttons that control the view of the side panel. Initially the camera and view buttons were the only two uh, views available really. Uh, now we have all four of those working. So let's go through what's changed in the side. Go to the camera here and you see things like your S and Q, shutter, white balance, uh, sensitivity, ISO, etc. Uh, now they've added in the, in the uh, gamma selection here the ability to, to not only do S-log, hypergamma, or standard gamma, but also to load in your own custom gamma curves into what they call user gammas. These curves can be made in Sony's CVP file editor program, but they can also be made in future programs that will design curves to go there. These aren't lookup tables, they're just custom contrast curves, which could allow you for better control over your image and sort of standard video mode. So a great option, especially if you've used it before in other cameras. All right, so that's what's changed on that front page. But if you hit the camera button one more time, now you have a whole new page there, right? And this gives you the ability to do a couple things. One, turn on and off color bars. Now we can do that from the outside of the camera. Couldn't do that before. Uh, auto white balance is an option on the outside of the camera now. Big deal. Uh, you have to be hit the button again. You have to have your custom color temperature being set to uh, memory. Once that's set there, hit the camera button again, and I can actually run the auto white balance right there. Very handy to have, and we'll just sort of show you the display. Auto black balance is an option now as well from the outside, something you can do before in the menus, of course. Hit that button once a day, it's a good idea, capture lens. It'll check for dead photo sites, things like that, that make a big difference for making sure your image quality is good all the time. And then finally, SDI sub de uh, display is a button now, is an option on the outside. Uh, if you don't have a viewfinder on the camera, you may actually lose access to seeing the menus, which would be kind of frustrating for some. So here you can turn on the sub display in case it was turned off and get those menus back. So nice, but nice option to have. Uh, below that we have the file menu, which is, uh, gives you the ability to load all files. All files are basically uh, a, set, uh, a file store of all of your settings on the camera. You can store a bunch of those to an SD card and then recall them here hit that button one more time, uh, you have the scene file display. We have custom scene files that we posted on the website here uh, that you may have dialed in. Here you can recall them very quickly. Now it can only recall internally stored scene files. You can't pull it off of an SD card just yet, but hopefully we'll see that in a future release. Um, and then hit that, one, that button one more time, and we get lens recall. You make custom lens files for the camera with white shading offsets, things like that. There that is as well, so very cool. Uh, that's all inside that file menu. Below that, one more down, audio slash timecode, the AU slash TC button, right? Hit that button, and we get an audio display. So finally, uh, out, uh, options to adjust the audio input levels on the camera, uh, from the outside, that is. The first two options here are uh, uh, channel one and channel two selections. This is actually just showing you what's set on the far side of the camera. Uh, this is the uh, little switches that you see above the XLR port. So I have one line and one mic here. Next to that I have my input options. They're both set to auto. I can set them to manual and dial in a, a level if I want to. Right? Uh, and then next to that I have the mic channel reference, which is basically my, my uh, base amplification for a mic level input. I can adjust that as well if I want to. Great. One more time, hit that button one more time, and you'll get uh, the monitor out options for audio. This is where you can set your headphone volume level down here. Mic monitor level, and then I can also choose to hear either both channels in my ears, channel one slash two here, or just channel one, or just channel two. So audio monitoring options, your sound guy will love these things right there on the side of the camera. Uh, one more time, and you get time code, right? So uh, the third display there lets you set things like, you know, free run, record run, etc., cetera, uh, preset, so on. So here you can choose to see a display of time code or duration. I can set, reset or set my actual time code values, dial something in. I can set preset, I can set regen, free run, record run, all right there on the side. Easy access, easy to do. So a great option to have. And then the view button stays 
basically the same as it always was. You hit that and you can turn your thumbnails on and whatnot. Another option that I really love, which is sort of a change to the outside of the camera, is the ability to assign on one of these buttons here, uh, video signal monitor, which is basically a waveform, vector scope, or histogram display. I can, I, can hit a, I can choose a button that will actually show me on my viewfinder or my, or my SDI output uh, waveform, vector scope, or histogram. So hit that button here and you'll see it pops up there. There it is, a little waveform. Hit it again, you get the little vector scope. Hit it again, you get the histogram. So great option to have. I like it on the assignable buttons. You can also do it in the uh, viewfinder display on off menu in, within the full menus of the camera. It's buried in there as well. If you want to access it this way, I like it on the button. Very nice to have. Turn that off just like that. So those are the big changes for the interface of the camera. Um, the OLED viewfinder, if you have the OLED viewfinder, will now support false color, which is a color overlay. It's sort of like a, zebra, a special zebra mode. That's an upgrade that has to be done at Sony, which will be available in the future. Other mechanical changes are new cables are available, longer cables and right angle cables for the viewfinder are available as parts from Sony. And also there's a new ND knob from Sony, which has to be pulled out to be adjusted so it's harder to accidentally hit it. Uh, so these are nice changes mechanically. And then finally, on the outside, the SDI outputs of this camera, as well as the 55, now give you the option of outputting video all the time on all of the SDIs. Previously, really only outputs one and three did much of anything in most modes. Now we can have duplicate outputs uh, per uh, SDI. So it's a great option to have if you need it. Okay, so that's sort of the outside changes. Uh, there's one or two big, big ones inside the camera I want to go over as well, namely the ability to record now not just in HD, uh, but also in 2K. So the 55 could do HD and 4K before. Now the 55 can do HD, 2K, and 4K. And the 5 here can do HD and 2K. What is 2K? Well, uh, HD is regarded as full HD is 1920 pixels across, 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels tall. That's an HD signal. A 2K signal is the same height, 1080 pixels tall by 2048 pixels wide. It's a different aspect ratio as well. So it's 17 by 9 instead of 16 by 9. Okay. So this is a nice option to give you a little bit more pixel area. It really does truly represent the whole sensor area that we're capturing. So we can turn that on the menus uh, by going into the menu and then going into my system settings here and going into format, XAVC 2048 by 1080p. If you go to the F55, you would see uh, the 4K option above that still. So these are great things to have if you need them. I'm really glad to see they've added it in there just for that extra little pixel area if you want it. Beyond that in the menus, there's some small changes that happen along the way. Better clip naming options. They have a flicker reduce mode in there now which can get rid of any flickering lights in your frame so you can turn that on and off in the uh, video and the camera menu there. Um, just small adjustments that made it more and more stable of a camera as well. So nice options there. But I want to uh, take a time in the next video to go over the high speed changes. Now that's the other really big thing beyond the 2K internally that's changed in this camera uh, is on the 5 and 55. Now we can do 120, 180, 240 frames a second if, if needed. But how that all sets up, how that all works together and the modes, etc., is a whole video in itself. So I'm going to give it time and I'll uh, see you then. So thanks for watching and see you next time.